Welcome back to the land of rainbow robot unicorns on the charismatic voice. You might have guessed correctly that today is a very special day. I get to interview Angus McSix. But first, I'm gonna dive into one of the new songs from his album that just got released. This new album is featuring Angus McSix and the Sword of Power. So you probably also guessed right that I'm really excited to talk about Angus's favorite swords and which ones he think would trump other ones in various kinds of battles. We're gonna talk about lightsabers too. He doesn't know it yet, but it's gonna happen. So I hope you will join me right after this deep dive into Master of the Universe for an interview with Angus McSix. Let's get to it. It's such a cool label. I really love all of the lore that happens behind Angus McSix. So if you haven't yet, please do yourself a favor and go to their website and read about the story that happens behind this because it's just super, super fun to follow all of the characters and what all is happening. At this point, the predecessor, Angus McFrith, essentially is, has fallen and this is you know, coinciding partly with uh, his departure from Glory Hammer too. So at one point in there, he talks about Glory leaving his hammer. <laughs> I was like, ha ha, what? Yep, that happened. Uh, so now we have the return of not Angus McFive, but Angus McSix, which totally cracks me up as well. He's so, so clever with all of this. I just adore it. Also, vocally, I just have to say, Thomas Winkler has an incredible voice. And this is why I keep coming back to him. He has so much power and the ability to make massive leaps without making it seem like it's a massive leap at all. He makes that seem easy, but it's very, very difficult. And then you add to that, he adds all of this um, extra roughness with some distortion, but he can do it totally clean as well. And I'm hoping that maybe later we'll get a, a big wow moment because I know sometimes he can jump up high and make almost like a squealo tenor kind of sound that's shocking. Shocking. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. You're surprised, right? <laughs> that right there, the little bit of extra electronics in there also makes me as a robot unicorn very, very excited. I'm excited to hear what he does with all of those layers of electronic voices. <laughs> heavy do you think that hammer is? I love the way he's just like, ah, toss the hammer. It's no, it's gone. Right. It's a, it feels very Thor ultimately. Um, sorry. I'll, I'll uh, let this storyline continue a little more. I have drowned in the fires, but I have lost my soul. So in the whole album, at one point, there's a song called Six Scalibur, not Excalibur, but Six Scalibur. And of course, this is Angus McSix's sword that he discovers. I love the way it has a big six on it. Uh, 
Very, very important to understand though. It's six caliber. Get the it and the six correct, please. Six caliber. And on top of that, let's talk about Angus McSix's incredible vocals a little bit more. I love the rate of his vibrato in here. It feels very, very healthy to me. Vibrato often develops when you have good balance in muscles. And especially when you're singing these huge, powerful lines like he's singing, you need to have some balance in the system and this periodic relaxation of muscles in the larynx. That can really help a singer have a little more longevity in their career. So listen, as I go back one more time, listen to when he brings that vibrato in. And I just think the rate of it and the excursion from the pitch, so like how far apart that happens and how far away from the pitch it goes. I think both of those things are just so perfectly in tune with this particular genre. Very healthy. Reminds me of Bruce Dickinson. Love that harmony on top. must be making a He-Man reference here. I, I feel like Sword of Power, Master of the Universe, we must be talking about He-Man somewhere, somewhere in there. I was a big She-Ra fan growing up. Again, no one is surprised. <laughs> no one. Uh, I like the new costume. This is the first time um, I'm getting to really appreciate the whole transition from previous costume to this costume. I think it's great. I, the way he lifts the sword out, it looks like there's a lot of weight in it. He pulls, and this is one of the so, uh, one of the questions I want to ask Angus McSix, and that is, does it weigh on him at all when he's performing and he has a sword or previously a hammer? Is it difficult to wield that while singing? You know, that might sometimes if you have extra core tension that can disturb your singing support. So I'm really curious if there are certain times when he knows that he's gonna wield his weapon, or if there are times when he thinks, oh, I'm gonna like rest on this, or maybe I'm gonna use it in some really cool way to help my support. I'm not sure. I have to say, despite my love of swords and cosplay, I don't think I've ever sung with a sword in my hands. So this is a, this is a, gonna be a very interesting conversation. <laughs> yep. That was a cool effect. Um, it's just, it's so much fun, right? I love it when metal is so fun. Like that's one of the things that is great about music is you can be in any kind of mood and whatever you listen to is going to affect that mood. And sometimes you need to, you need to just kind of seep in sad emotions. Sometimes you need to let stuff out that way. But for me, I often feel like I want to be pumped up and I want to add to some happy of the day. So most of the time, like 80% of the time, I'm in the mood for some happy, happy metal or happy other songs too. I just like, I like it when I've got a lot of positivity in my music. I, I do. Of course, I love opera too. So don't get me wrong. Sometimes you got to like go weep and die on stage. But this, this is a pump your day up kind of song. I love it.
There you go. That upper extension there and his harmonies, I love this upper extension in Thomas Winkler's voice. It's crazy impressive. He has so much weight and so much power and also lots of grit that he's bringing into the sound. That tends to be quite difficult to take extra high, but he does it. It's just like, it's like he goes into another gear on his voice that most people just don't have. You can, I'm gonna go back one more time. Also, I like the way he's introducing the band members here. It's pretty cool. Yeah. There's our Amazon. That's crazy good. It's like, almost like a reinforced falsetto, but it's got more weight to it. I love that line right before the chorus. Guess who's back one better? <laughs> yes! I'm so happy that we're seeing this rebirth of Angus now mix six. It it makes me incredibly happy to see uh, this new era emerge, essentially. I'm so, so into it. I'm so into the storyline. And also, thank you, Thomas Winkler, for making your lyrics so clear. Again, tons of leaps, tons of power, tons of grit in the sound. But overall, I think that this music is about relating a story. Right? We've got this whole big epic storyline that needs to be told. But in music, a lot of times we have you know tons of repetition and uh, and maybe we don't get very far in songs. A lot of times there's there's not a ton that can happen in just one song unless you're really going after a storytelling kind of song. If you're doing that, your words have to be understood the first time. That's really, really tough to do. And he's doing it super well. I love his enunciation. <laughs> Buff drummer. I do feel like there are some awesome video game elements in this that, that it's really, really exciting to me. But also, let's talk about the band that has been assembled here. So obviously you have Angus McSix there, Thomas Winkler, and then you have uh, this Amazonian figure that's come up. It's a laser Amazon, okay, from Caledonia. This is Thalia. Bella Zeka, I'm not sure if I'm getting her name right, but I think that's really cool. The Lastris is uh, the name, and she's queen of these Amazons. And then you have, uh, <laughs> this one cracks me up. Ska, buff berserker from the north. And that's gonna be Manu Lauder, who's on the drums. Super, super awesome. And then later on, we're gonna, I think, I'm not sure if we're gonna see it in this music video. I haven't seen the whole thing, obviously. So, but at some point, I think we're going to be introduced to our villain, who's going to be Sebastian Liverman, and he's the archdemon. I think we say Zebulon. Again, not entirely entirely sure, but it does have like various elements of Skeletor and the He-Man thing, and that makes me super super happy. So shout out to the band that has been assembled. Love it. Yeah. I just dig female guitarists. Thank you. Thank you. Key 
change, but also this mug look on his face when she gives him a little kiss is so funny. Uh, I really dig the production on the voice, the way that at one point we had a filter made it sound a little bit further away. There's definitely some more electronic elements in this throughout. I feel like it's got a very futuristic feel while also still feeling ancient in some ways, right? We've got a sword. So it makes this whole thing timeless. And I love that. Is that the tough face? <laughs> I'll ask him for a tough face. <laughs> That's a cool, cool ride. We had a key change. It doesn't sound any more difficult. He just makes things that are difficult sound super, super easy. Ugh. Whoa, that can't be, that can't be the end. I, I feel like there's still a, a minute left in this video, so I'm gonna play more after this, but it sounded like an ending. But I wanted to comment on the way he goes up there. That's exactly the extension that I'm talking about in his voice. It's very, very impressive. It's, unless you've heard him before, I don't think you can expect it. It's, it's his sixth, seventh, eighth vocal gear. <laughs> I love this image. Don't be done, don't be done. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, new album coming out. Hey, it's been six of the Sword of Power, woo! Oh, that's it? Is that really it? Oh. That's why this is longer. There's our villain. Hey, vocal fry. Hey, vocal fry with really long reverb. No, go back. Okay, that sound. Uh, you can do it too. Basically, very, very minimal pressure, very relaxed, low larynx, uh, very little breath flow is needed to do this. It tends to be a lazy breath flow. Try it with him and me. Yeah, <laughs> sound. The villain has emerged the same portal that Angus Big Six made. Uh, and he all throws us with his vocal fry abilities. <laughs> to be continued indeed, because I'm gonna talk to Angus McSix right after this. I hope that you will join me. We're gonna talk about swords, I promise you. We're gonna talk about his vocal technique, how he gets that extra register, how he thinks about his support. I'm gonna ask him a lot about this new emergence of Angus McSix and what we might be able to expect in the future. So I hope you will join me over here very, very soon. May you fall more in love with music every day.